from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Denise sends an email. Denise says, hello, Tom. The reason I'm writing to you is because I need you to give your advice to a friend of mine. She is turning 21 years old, and she is still a virgin. She wants to remain a virgin until marriage and then have six kids with her husband. May I say, somebody who wants to remain a virgin until marriage, then wants to have six kids, has no interest in sex. She's probably scared to death of having sex. And, of course, when you've got six kids, you've got the perfect built-in excuse to never have sex. Right? I mean, if you're going to wait until you get married to have sex, then you're going to have six kids. You're going to be looking at the calendar to see when you're ovulating. And other than that, you really don't have any interest. My opinion. The letter goes on to say, I have told her many times that she needs to lose her virginity and have several sexual experiences with different men before she decides to settle down with one. I truly believe sex is about 80% of a relationship, and that might be the downfall if she ends up marrying a guy before having sex with him. She listens to your show every day on her way home from work. And I was wondering if you could comment on that situation. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> well, clearly, Denise, I agree with you. I don't believe that in this era, again, we're in the 21st century now. Uh, we are not in the old country, our Lifespan doesn't end at 40 anymore like it did 110 years ago. Literally, around the turn of the 20th century, people were living to 40. That was the ripe old age we lived till. And nowadays, the average person lives to be, uh, is it 77 years old? 77, I believe it is, the average. It's actually higher for women. There is no rush to get married. There is no rush to... Uh, have children. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So you have time to figure out uh, what you like and what you don't. What will make you happy and what won't. I can't tell you how many women I've spoken to on the air or in person who uh, told me that uh, they didn't have sex until late. And then they, uh, when they had a boyfriend, they uh, uh, put him off and said they weren't going to have sex with him. And then when they finally had sex with him, it's because they were convinced they were going to marry him. And so, therefore, they gave in and said, okay, I'll have sex with you because, you know, we're going to be together forever anyway. And how many of those cases did not end up in marriage? Many. And now people see themselves as damaged goods because they had sex with one person. Oh, my God, that's screwy. That is screwy. Sex is important. Stop demeaning sex. Stop saying sex is no big deal. Or you don't need sex. 
And stop assuming that the first guy who's nice to you and opens a car door for you is going to satisfy you in the bedroom. Because he may very well not do that, especially if he is also a virgin. How many people are virgins into their 20s and 30s? We've done shows about this. And, of course, all you freaks and geeks have called in here and reported to us. But none of you sounded like you had any interest in or curiosity about sex. For example, to say this in the simplest, cleanest way, uh, many of the people I've spoken to who were still virgins had never discovered uh, the art of self-satisfaction. Now, if you really love sex, or if you really crave it, when you can't get it, you will do a little self-satisfying. You will. Okay? And yet I had all these people calling and saying, oh, I'm a virgin, Tom. No, I would never do anything like that. No, that's disgusting. Mm -mm -mm. Anybody who says that's disgusting when it comes to uh, any aspect of sex... It's probably somebody who doesn't like sex. Yes, I believe that being a virgin until you get married is a big, big mistake. Look at the divorce rate. Look at the number of people whose marriages don't make it. And then what happens after you've only had sex with one person and it didn't work out? What happens to you mentally? What happens to you physically? It's screwy. I mean, is there anybody out there who still thinks being a virgin until you get married is a good idea? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. No, it's Tom. Man, you like the dopest cat on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get a hood pass from me, sir. Anybody will come to the hood. I got your back. Huh? I love that. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> I'm like this show. I'm 1-800-5-800-TOM. The best of the Tom Like a show. That's not a radio show. That's the stuff you never hear. And we talk about it in the studio when the mics are off. <laughs> stuff we would get sued for. <laughs> the kind of stuff that if I'm in the middle of doing something on the air, I have turned the mic off to say... You know that stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. Anyway, all right, 1-800-5800-TOM. And uh, we do have a listener out there who uh, has a friend who uh, thinks she should remain a virgin till married and then have six kids. She's 21 and still a virgin. You think that's a good idea? Here's Jared in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. All the Tom like his show. Oh, Hello. Tom. Hello, Jared. Oh, it is so nice to finally talk to you. Sure it is. Yeah, uh, well, here's the thing. I'll go ahead and admit it. I'm 20 years old and I'm a virgin. But I consider myself fairly handsome looking. I'm not one of these fat, disgusting, gelatinous slobs that you probably think would be a 20-year-old virgin. You mean like the other Jared in the Subway commercials? You know how much crap I got for that? I bet you up, did. Man? Oh, my. Oh, man. It, it, it's not funny. But anyway, um, so I'm in college right now. I'm going to school. I'm working my ass off. Uh, you know, I'm going through. I've got a full-time job. And I'm doing everything I can to try to get my degree and get everything and get rich and work at it and try to do it right. And where I am right now, I just don't want to put that kind of weight on my shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Well, then uh, don't have fat chicks. Yeah, good, and you won't be putting point. that weight on your shoulders. Oh. I, I don't know. I just don't want to. I, I just don't feel like I really want to deal with it right now. It's not that I don't like sex like some of these people. Yeah, but are your saying. type will end up marrying the first guy, first chick you have uh, you have sex with. You think so? I, I've seen it before. And what would because you it's like? going to be the best sex you ever had. You're going to be well, like, this is great. Because <laughs> you wouldn't know good from bad. I don't. Well, I don't know, Tom. 
just like you know, you, you're you're always telling people, you know, you gotta, you, you should always try to get money and get paid and that kind of thing. And I'm trying to do that, but you know, just trying to get a girl, that just seems like it would complicate things right now. Well, if you're that handsome, how hard do you have to work? I don't have to work that hard. It's just I don't really care at the moment. You don't care? Well, there are more important things. And they're more, they're more important than, well, look, I think sex is very, very important. I would In agree fact, with you. it is one of the reasons you work so hard to get a degree and have a great career is so that you can get the hottest chick you can get. Yeah, but don't I want to focus on that, like, after I get all that degree? Oh, I don't think you want to have a relationship or get married or anything. I think you want to get laid because it's part of being 20 years old. You think so? Yes. All right. Point well taken. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's go to Dana on the Tom Likas show. Oh, Dana's shutting her radio off. Uh, it's All right. Oh, but it's still not off. Hello? There we go. <laughs> Why do I do that? You know that sounded like trouble. Going in. <laughs> Jesus. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how are you, brother? Doing great. Uh, Tom, I partied most of my life until I was 28. Uh, got a good job. Went through college. Got married at 28. And I decided I'm going to marry a virgin. Because I'm, gonna, I'm not going to buy a second-hand wife. What do you think about a that? Second-hand wife? You're like a tenth-hand husband. Tom, I deserve it, Tom. What do you mean you deserve it? I deserve to buy... A, I'm not going to buy a used wife, bro. That's the way I look at it. Call me old-fashioned, but I'm happy as hell. But you're not that old-fashioned because you're busy banging away. I, yeah, yeah, I did. But I decided that when I'm going to get married, I'm, I'm going to marry a virgin. And I, what makes you think that a virgin will be satisfied with you in the long run? Uh, how do you know? And right. by the way, we've had these calls. We've had these emails. How do you right. know that after a little while, the virgin yeah. won't say, I wonder what I missed out on, and will go out and get it for somebody else? Well, nobody knows anything. But what I do know, I, I have the experience. I got the experience, I got the money, and uh, I'm happy as hell. So you have a virgin? Yeah, I married a virgin. I see. And she's not the least bit curious about what other guys would have been like in the sack. Bro, you know what? She's, she's living in a good house. She's driving a good car. She's uh, having sex with me at least twice a day. When I come home from my break, uh, I work. I'm a dentist, and I'm I'm living it up, bro. And I I told myself that. And is she from another virgin. country or something? I mean, how many women in this no, country no, are virgins? She's from a very good family. She's from a very good family with good morals, and uh, you know. Uh, but wait a minute! You say it's a family with good morals. Do the guys all get laid in that family? Hey, the guys uh, have that advantage, pal. Come on, man. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You have a family with good morals, where the women are virgins and the men are out getting laid. What's wrong with that? I just think it's rather preposterous to believe that there's all that I'm much of it out there. Like that, but I'm just saying, me in general, I'm not trying to judge nobody. But the, my preference is, I decided that when I'm going to get married, I'm going to get married with someone who hasn't uh, been used and abused. But but again, how do you know that one day she just won't get curious and start looking for it somewhere else? But Tom. Uh, who knows anything? Who knows if you're not going to marry you? But I think it's far more likely. When yeah. someone has had nothing to compare you to, than somebody who's had others and they decided that you're the best there is. Yeah, Tom, a slut is going to be a slut. That doesn't make you a slut. Somebody could have five other boyfriends in her life and that would be it. Yeah. That doesn't make you a no, slut. No, no, no. I, I know what you're saying. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying, me in general, I've always thought of uh, if I'm going to marry someone, I'm someone's going to be the, the mother of my children. I just want, in the back of my mind, I don't want to think what she's done in the past. You know what I'm saying? And what about her thinking about where you've been in the past? Um, she's cool with it, actually. She told me that she wanted to marry somebody who has had experience. Mm -hmm. How old is she? She's uh, 21. And you're 30? Yeah. And how old was she when you got with her? Uh, she was. She just turned 18. <laughs> she did not. She was 17, and you changed it for the air. 
Well, 17, I, I met her, but 18, <laughs> we were dating officially. So you had sex with her when she was 18 or 17? Uh, no, no, no. She was 18. She was 18? She was 18. So you yeah. were married to her at 18? Actually, I, actually, yeah, yeah. We, we had sex once uh, we got engaged. Let's put it that way. Mm hmm. Okay. She didn't, even, she didn't even give it up to me until I got engaged with her. Uh huh. And I was uh, cool with it all the way. Right. Because she was bad. 18 and a virgin. And right. then how long did it take before she pumped out a kid? Let me guess. Nine months of the day. Uh, close to a year. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's okay. right. All right. Beautiful, beautiful girl. And you don't think this will ever be an issue? Um, I don't think so. I mean, that's her fa Her parents are still together and, uh, you know, never been divorced, good family, good education, and um, I don't see why anything could go wrong. Well, because she might get, as I said, she might get curious about what she missed out on, and you're going to find out whether that's going to happen. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Monica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? It's a question. Hello is a question. How do you uh -oh. answer a question like that? Hello? <laughs> I'd like to know, why do you always talk about fat women? Why? What do you mean, why do I always talk about fat women? Yeah, always talking about fat women. I only talk about them when they're uh, relevant. Uh, it's something that uh, men should avoid unless they can't afford a woman who's in good shape. It doesn't matter. I mean, Most fat women, like fat women, women are for poor guys. You know that. Poor guys, no. It yes. doesn't matter if, it's, if you're rich or poor. Yeah, well, actually, it, matter. it does. Actually, Don't it does. Tell you try uh, it. Actually, it does. It's more bounce to the ounce. More bounce to the ounce. There you go. But the thing is that when, when a man has money, he doesn't want anything bouncing. Well, honey, let me tell you one thing. It's more interesting and more... So I don't know if I can say this on air. Well, then why, why don't you just say something clean then? Well, it's more sensation. For who? For the man. Oh, hardly. 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 Ask any man, okay, a man, call on the show right now, ask if you've ever been with a fat chick. Well, let me tell you something, when I was poor, I was with fat chicks. When I was a young guy, I was with fat chicks. And I don't understand, how could you talk about fat people and you're fat yourself? Well, because I've got money, dear, and therefore I could afford uh, women who are hot, young, and in good shape. No, I don't Fat think women so. are for guys who are losers, uh, deadbeats, guys who are no, not well employed, no. guys who are not well educated. No, no, you don't no, see no, any. Uh, name a millionaire who's got a fat chick. Name one. Name one what? Mill uh, you heard when I turn the radio off or whatever that is in the background, turn it off. Tell the person to shut up or whatever. Mm hmm. Because it's distracting you and us. I said. Name a millionaire who has a fat chick. Uh, I don't. I don't know who. No, I don't know any of them. Yeah, that's right. And you know Their what? Names. There aren't any. They are. They no, are. There aren't. With a fat chick. Who? Um. Who was his name? What was that guy with the fat? Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold is not married to Roseanne. Was, that's what you say. Well, he was. By the way, Roseanne was more famous than Tom Arnold at the time they got married and probably made more money than he did. And I'm pretty sure those actresses that are heavy don't approve of you. That's not the point. Talking about Again, darling, I, that wasn't the question. The question is, name a millionaire who's married to a fat chick. Well, there are a couple of them out there. Name one. I don't know their names because I don't know them. Well, how do you know they exist? Because I see it on TV. Yeah? <laughs> what show? Where? What time? What channel? Uh, what, what time? What channels? Right. Um, different channels, different times. Oh, sure. You know, as well as I do, the vast majority of well-off guys, famous guys, successful guys, have hot, young, slim chicks. Yeah, sluts, probably. That's hopefully. Half of them are sluts. And Hopefully. Money. Well, you sound like a slut yourself, talking I'm about all these sensations slut. and all this no, stuff. No, I'm faithful to my man. Mm. You're, and your man, how much does he make? My man makes $35 an hour. Ooh, 35 Ooh. smackers. 
Yes. An hour. Yes, he does. Wow, we. Wow, yes, it's enough. Who we? Unless he don't have nobody hating on him, urinating in his yard. That's that's probably what. People don't like you. There's a lot of people out there. Don't people like love you. me. I'm the I number one. Like I got the number one show in the afternoon, dear. They, they people love me. Mm-hmm. Hot chicks are not offended by this show. You know why? Because it doesn't apply to them. You know what? Whatever. I'm just. I just. Oh, just. Disgusting. Why are you so angry? Hey, and why are you so? The way you why are you so angry women. and bitder? I don't degrade, degrade dear. I couldn't degrade degrade you any degrade. further than you were already degraded. What? It, it, you know why you're so degraded? Is because you got that fork in your mouth, dear. You got to take the fork out of your mouth. No fork out of my mouth. Yeah. I love to eat. I'm heavy. I'm sure and you I'm do. On my way to go eat now. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Men love big women. Like I said. Really? Well, which men are these? Out, Poor men? Dead bees? More cushion for the push. Yes, exactly. Uh, more uh, more uh, ripples, uh, more cellulite, yes. Uh, yes. more diabetes, more heart attacks, yes. more yes. Uh, blood pressure problems. Yes. Well, I'm helping, I'm uh, helping. By the way, I might point out yes. to the guys out there that birth control is way less likely, and this is a fact, a medical fact, uh, to be effective on women over 150 pounds. And the reason is simple, because the dosage on a birth control pill is the same. Uh, it's the same size no matter how big you are. So the bigger you are, the less pill there is in your body, and the more likely it is, you're going to get knocked up. That's a fact. That's why you use condoms. Uh, again. Be safe and clean. Right, right. So you don't even use the pill, do you? The pill? No, I don't. There you use go. Condoms. Yeah, that's right. But you're hoping to get knocked up if you haven't already. Oh, no. I'm not planning on getting knocked up. So you have no, no children? No, I don't have no children. Not, not right now. Uh-huh. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. And uh, your man, he lives with you, does he? Yes, he does live with me. Oh, is he married to you? Uh, yes, he is married to me, my oh. husband. And why doesn't he want to have children with you? Why? Because we're not planning on having children. We just got married a year ago. A year ago? So you were yes. single until you were 31 years old? No, I wasn't single. No, I had boyfriends. Now, well, you were not married, therefore you were single. Yeah, I was single, yes. Yes, so you were 31 years old. Yes, what's wrong and, with and that? And were you dating millionaires? No, I wasn't dating millionaires. Damn straight you, know you weren't, because you know you're fat. Because you're fat. That's why you weren't dating millionaires, because you're fat. Money, money, let me tell you something. Money does not make a world go around. Well, that is what people who don't have money all say. Because I'll be happy with little than I got. Because I'm that's happy, all you're I'm getting, happy. because you're fat. No, because I'm happy. And fat. I'm not materialistic. If I You can't money, be materialistic. You're I fat, and therefore no you're not going to have any money. Are no Benz, are no um, Lamborghini. No, you're never no going to have... There, why, why buy a not, Lamborghini? Not, you couldn't shove... Satisfied. You couldn't squeeze those hips into a Lamborghini if you tried. No. Yes, I can. No, you couldn't. I have a big butt and big hips. I'm sure you do. Dad, my, yeah, and you think God, that you think it would fit in a Lamborghini, you. dear? Do you think it would fit in a Lamborghini? Do you? I think I will. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, clearly you've never tried. No, because I. You know what? I'm not materialistic. Oh, sure you're not. Unless it comes I'm to not. food. Excuse me. Unless it comes to food. Oh yes, honey. You're what the human Cinnabon, huh? Yes, I don't care. I go to Black Angus, Red Lobster. Red Lobster, like boy, nothing but the best for you, huh? Exactly. exactly. Oh, yes. Exactly. And another right. thing. The home of KRABB. You great women. Karab. Great huh? Women so bad that you're going to end up with a fat whore. What? Well, well, darling, mark my words. Why, oh, mark your words, darling. I, I, I don't I, want you to take you out Compton style. I'm not, hang on a second before you go, Mike. What did you want to say here to Monica? Yeah, this this when, girl right here, brother Tom. She's got to just shut the hell up, man. She is just she's just yapping. Now. I'm well, like you said, you know, she's got to get that fork out of her mouth. She's just she's just going. Oh, you know, shut uh, up. 
You know what? Let me, let me tell you. Jimmy, let me tell you something. You're probably you know, skinny and, and, and bald headed. Can, can, you, can you do me a favor? Can you let me talk for a second? No, no, not at all. I got a beautiful woman, gorgeous woman, and I make yep. a lot of money. Oh, awesome. crap. Oh, yeah. No, I do. Oh, crap. Let me, you let me just tell slap you your lips. Let, let, let me tell you something. This is what it is. A, a fat girl is kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. What? A fat girl's kind of... You didn't hear what I said? You got to get no, that voice up out of your ear. So I can hear you. Tom, you know what? I, I'm, I'm done with this girl. She's got to clear the rolls of fat out of her ear so she can hear you. Try it again. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it is too no, much. No, my ears here. don't have rolls. It's too much, too much hair. Tom, Tom, do me a favor. Hands. She got Tom, big fat earlobes. I'm just heavy in the hips and the butt. <laughs> you're heavy in the That's mouth. The Donna, part. you're heavy in the mouth, dear. <laughs> Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay no. with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's me. right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. And is calling from Parkland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. How Hi. are you? Great. Well, I am a woman who is a heavy woman, and, you know, I started out at 325, and, you know, I agree. I believe when you say walk away from walk away from the plate, do it. That's... I've lost I've lost fifty pounds, and I'm pushing for one thirty. Wow, that's what and I you know that's what I'm pushing for, and I agree with you on the fact that yeah, women who are two seventy five, two fifty, two hundred pounds are not going to get those get a millionaire. You know that man has thousands of choices. That's right. Of, of women who do keep themselves up, women who did not drown themselves in the Ben and Jerry's. Exactly right. So, I, you know, I, I, I listen to the last woman who's like, well, I don't think that it has anything to do with da 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 You know, that's not, you know, with having things. That's, that's absolutely wrong. You know, if your life consists purely around food... You're not going to get anywhere in life. That's right. And you're surely not going to get anybody with money to spend any time with you. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I, you know, I'm a woman who, yeah, I am a plus size. And I completely agree with you. I don't think it's, you know, the woman who said, well, I'm not materialistic. I'm not materialistic. Yeah, if you had a million dollars, you'd definitely be materialistic. You That's know, exactly you, right. Anybody who says, oh, money's not everything, they, they, they're, those are people who don't have money. Well, and you know, I'm I'm a woman who, yeah, I'm married, yeah, I I work full time, you know, I I, but the thing of it is, is you know, I want my husband to stay happy. He married me, yes, at three hundred pounds, three twenty five, but you know, I, it is a conscious choice that if I want to keep my husband, I've got to lose this weight. Why'd you get married so young? You know. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but I have no children. I am on birth control, and I do use. But I think it, I, I, you're absolutely right in the fact that birth control doesn't work for a woman who's my size. That it's made for somebody who's half my size. I mean, I guess you gotta like uh, do two of them at a time. Exactly. <laughs> and so you know, I'm sitting here going, you know, I, you know, I don't want to sit in. This you got to do like a Roger Clemens. You got to eat them like Skittles. Exactly. So, you know, Tom, I think that you rock. I think that, you know, there's a lot of people who don't want to hear what you have to say, <laughs> even though it's the truth, you know. And, you know, sometimes the truth hurts, and sometimes it takes the truth for people to pull their heads out of their butts. That is exactly right, Ann. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Chuck, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how are you doing? Great. Good. Um, I actually want to talk a little bit about something differently. Uh, you're saying, you know, why would you wait? Um, I'm 22. I'm a virgin. Um, but I went to a Christian college, real conservative school, and, um, you know, it's extremely pound into the head. You know, you don't you do not do that until you get married. And uh, people end up getting married at, like, 18, 19 years old. 
And uh, by like 24, 25, they're getting onto their second marriage because they, you know, they didn't want to be tempted. So instead, they rush into marriage, and then they get they get divorced five years later, and now they have a kid with that person they got married to because they they wanted to have that holy relationship. Yes. So I, I just uh, I don't know. I, I like I said, I myself am a virgin. I um, do think that I am someone that you know follows. Uh, what the Bible says, and I know that that's not quite what uh, all the listeners would agree with, but that is my, uh, you know, moral compass, and I think that we shouldn't be doing it. But I do respect someone more that decides to, you know what, I'm going to do that because that's what my desires are, as opposed to someone who rushes into marriage too quickly and then ruins, you well, know. Well, that's like, the, you know what, though? I mean, even if you believe in the Bible, and I'm an atheist, uh, so right, it doesn't right. really mean anything to me. Uh, but uh, don't you think some things in there are kind of outdated? For example... What about all the people out there who don't eat pork or shellfish? Who don't eat. Um, right, right. The the Old Testament law, I mean, the vast majority of Christians believe that uh, New Testament and Old Testament are uh, greatly different, that a dude named Jesus living about 2,000 years ago kind of wiped away a lot of those. You know, Old Testament says you can't wear a different colored uh but, but the, really, the New Testament isn't that much newer than the Old Testament. Let's face it, they're both kind of old. <laughs> they both and wouldn't you old. say that if you if you believe that some of the stuff of the Old Testament is, like, outdated, don't you think it's possible that some of the stuff of the New Testament is outdated, too? When I say it's outdated, I don't mean it's outdated because it's too old. I mean, it's outdated because a new a new thing came into place that took over, that overrode that, and that's what the New Testament was. Yeah, um, well, look around. Me, look around. Me. How many people are having sex at eleven and twelve these days? Much less eighteen. Right. I mean, it's. Well, I mean, to be honest, back then, um, you know, times have changed. When they were fourteen or fifteen, so it is a little different. I understand that, but uh, no, I, I don't see. I mean, if you give me a specific example, I can. I can tell you what my feeling is. By People did not wait until twenty-five to have sex back in the days when the uh, life expectancy was forty. Right. I'm not, I still think that, uh, you know, the what it says is the same thing, just because, yeah, it's, you know, a little bit more convenient back then to wait till marriage when you're 14 or 15 is different than uh, waiting when you're, you know, 24, 25. And or let five. me ask you a pra practical question here. How are you going to know how to do it? <laughs> um, you know, I'm sort of hoping that it takes care of itself once it gets there. I know but, you're uh, hoping for that. Uh, but I'm hoping the Easter Bunny is coming and bringing me some nice colored Easter eggs this year. And he tends to come each year. I had noticed that. <laughs> no. Uh, how how did you learn how to do it? How did I learn how to do it? At 13, yeah. I got with uh, a chick with a lot more experience than I had. Okay, so you learn how to do it by doing it, right? She, but no, but <laughs> point is, if you get with a virgin, she also won't know what to do. Okay, if we're both both ignorant to what, you know, the greatest possible thing could be, then we won't know that. So that's... that's but you, but the thing is, I must tell you, after years of having sex... Yeah. There is an art to it. Uh-huh. And... So that can be something that would be done between husband and wife, right? Not necessarily. Why not? Oh, do you know how to drive... Uh, did you know how to drive a car? <laughs> I do. Now, did you know when you first sat behind the wheel? Uh, no. Right. Somebody had to show you. Somebody who knew more than you did. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. And I think that goes for a lot of things in life. Mm, but not everything. I think everything. You haven't ever uh, taught yourself how to do something? Uh, You've always had either an owner's manual or someone who knows more. I always had sure someone who knew more about it than I did. And by the way... Uh, oh, I would always re I would always I would recommend for anything that you get uh, advice and uh, guidance on doing things you've never done before. I, I as an example, I went to Italy last year. Uh -huh. I've I've never been to Italy. I don't speak Italian and I don't know my way around. Now, yes, I could have dropped myself in the middle of Italy, and tried to figure out where I was, and where I was going and how to get around. But my trip was a lot better when people who knew more than I did showed me where Florence was and where Siena was, and where the Leaning Tower of Pisa was. And I enjoyed it a lot more, found it much more fulfilling than had I just taken a plane and said, take me to Italy. Now, this is, I mean, I don't think this is the best example we'll be talking about with both of us, but 
wouldn't you be able to sound the same thing by just buying a book at Barnes Noble or at a Borders that says, hey, these no. are, you know, this is what to do? No, no, not even then, because even then I don't speak Italian. I wouldn't know how to get to these places. I well, would, if they have detailed maps and that sort of stuff, I don't understand how... Well, do you really they, think sex is like traveling to Italy? You, you, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna get, you're stuff, gonna get I, what? You're gonna get a book and you're gonna get a map. You don't want me yeah. the comparison. I the vagina three feet south, and you're gonna make it a <laughs> U-turn and make a hairpin turn. I mean, <laughs> how's this? Are you gonna get GPS? <laughs> that, that's why myself said I don't think it's the greatest comparison. But um, no, I, I uh, bottom line is think that I don't. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna in any way put down. Your belief system, or uh, or you know what you how you uh, choose. I'm just to saying, apply. you would find sex a lot more fulfilling if someone who knew what they were doing showed you how. By the way, back in the old days, everyone loves talking about the old days about how wonderful <laughs> the morality was back then. Oh, I'm not saying it was wonderful at all. It's oh, terrible. well, yeah. back in the old days, what your dad did is your dad took you down to a whorehouse, and he paid a hooker uh, to have sex with you for the first time, so you would learn how to do it. That's uh. Not completely true, but I mean, uh, actually, it is. That. Actually, it is very true. <laughs> You're saying that's what everyone did in the. Old I days. never said a hundred percent of anything. Plenty of people just well went blindly and tried to have sex. So there's no doubt. Right. But there are plenty of dads who did that. That was part of the male bonding with your dad when you turn whatever age, sixteen, eighteen, whatever. Uh, your dad would take you down to the whorehouse where he himself occasionally went when mom wasn't putting out or had a headache. Right. Back in the good old days. Like I said, well, one, we're not talking about, I mean, I don't know, I'm getting kind of uh, not sure what, what time period we're talking about, because we were originally talking about the uh, the Bible and talking about Old Testament, New Testament. Now we're talking about possibly 17th, 18th century uh, Europe. and. No, United we're not talking. I'm not talking about the 17th, 18th century. I'm talking about 50 years ago. Or more. Oh, oh well, yeah. I, oh, good old days. I was also when we had you know, Jim Crow laws still in effect, and we had, you know, a whole lot of uh, stuff going on besides oh, the good old days where not. Ex I mean, it doesn't exist of the good old days in American society. We had the uh, Japanese internment camp sixty years ago. There weren't weren't good old days. We had uh, you know. Husbands constantly beating their wives. I, I don't know when the good old days were. Yes, by the way, advocated by the Bible, and I might add also uh, with churches that refused to give people divorces even though they were being beaten senseless. Oh, well, there are many churches that are going to take things completely wrong from what the Bible says. The Bible says that, uh, you know, divorce is not what you're supposed to be doing, but it does give examples where you can do it. Yeah. The Bible also, uh, the Bible, I mean... Uh, uh, does the Bible uh, condemn uh, domestic violence? Domestic does, violence. Does it condemn? Does it? Well, when you say condemn, are you saying is it? Forbid it, it. I'm sorry? Forbid it. Yes, absolutely. So it forbids a wife from beating, a uh, husband from beating his wife. Correct. Really? Oh, yeah. Awful lot of people use the Bible as the reason for, you know, men are in charge, men are in control, men are the head of the household. Well, the Bible says is that it does say women submit to your husband, but it says, uh, you know, husbands show the love of Christ to your wife. And it uses that example as, uh, what's, uh, you know, what the uh, um, relationship between Christ and the church is. It's, it's not saying that the woman's supposed to completely submit to whatever the husband does and the husband do anything you want. It's saying husbands show a perfect love to your wife. That's totally different things than what people take it to be, and that's why I totally agree. People take all religions completely away from what they're supposed to be. That's, I mean, not debatable. You look at any religion, people take it totally out of context, and people make it, you know, they twist it to what they want it to be. But that's not getting away from the fact that the Bible does lay out uh, many different moral principles as well as different, you know, commandments, if you will, on uh, how to live the right life. and. I do believe that, you know, if you follow that, you're just going to well, have, uh, get yourself out of some problems, definitely. Good luck finding a virgin. Good luck. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. That's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.